Well, happy March, dear saints. I pray that uh, March comes in like a lamb today and hopefully goes out like a lamb at the end of the month too, but we'll wait and see. As we gather today, again, more great promises from our Savior in the psalm today. In Psalm 91, we see this wonderful promise at the end that our Lord will continue to be with us. And we continue in Genesis chapter 18, and now the promise to old Abraham and his old wife that they are going to have a son between the two of them. And we'll unpack that in just a moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the words of the Lord from the psalmist today. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to fall you. No plague come near your tent. For he who has commanded his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot with a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a great psalm. This psalm is uh, quoted, actually misquoted, by Satan when Jesus is in the wilderness being tempted. But right here at the end, well, all the way through, did you hear those wonderful promises that are for you and I? Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him. Remember, every time God says, I will, that is a promise guaranteed to us. I will defend him. I will protect him. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him with long life and satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a great gift. What a great hope that we have in our Savior this first day of March and every day. Well, the Old Testament reading, we jump into Genesis chapter 18. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself down to the earth. And he said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you might refresh yourself. And after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, quick, three seas of fine flour knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and he took a calf tender and good and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. And he took curds and milk and the calf that they had prepared and he set it before them and they stood by them under the tree while they ate. Then he said, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, she is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have this pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. 
But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, no, but you did laugh. This is the word of the Lord. We see Abraham being a a completely gracious host as these three travelers come to him. And one of these travelers was the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ coming right there to Abraham, visiting with him, talking with him, and giving him that wonderful promise. And as Abraham, we talked last week about Abraham's nature of being so forgiving and loving and and not wanting anything to come through his family between him and Lot. And here we see just a wonderful example of how gracious and how, how good at hospitality Abraham and Sarai were, Sarah were. They prepared the cakes probably like a pancake baked in a cook stove or cooked on a cook stove type thing. They slaughtered the calf and cooked that and these men had everything they needed there and as they were waiting, the one, the Son of God, the pre-incarnate Son of God said to Abram, Abraham, that you will have a son. Now remember, Abraham is 99 years old now. He's an old man. And Sarah, his wife, she has been barren and has never had a son of their own. When God made the promise to them that they would have a son, Sarah sent her maidservant, Hagar, to Abraham. And Abraham lay with her and they had a son, Ishmael. And that would seem in their eyes to satisfy what God was saying. But in all reality, that does not fulfill the promise that was given in Genesis 3.15 that God would send a Savior of the world from the flesh of a woman, from the one flesh union of man and wife. And out of this promise that God made, that Jesus made to them, they would have a son. Now it's interesting that Sarah laughs. I don't think this was a jovial laugh. I don't think this was a finally yet now I'm going to have a son laugh. I think it was a sarcastic laugh. And you can hear that. The text reminds us that the way of women had departed from her. It was, she was past childbearing. Never, she thought in her head, would she own, hold her own son or daughter. And then when this promise comes from Jesus, the pre-incarnate Jesus, she laughs. After I'm old and my Lord is old, then I will have this promise. It might even have been a laugh of unbelief. But our Lord being there, he heard and he gently rebuked her, asking Abraham why she laughed. And then she later on denied that she did laugh, but he he gently said, no, you did laugh. You see, it's in unbelief that, that we go forward when we hear the promises of God and they make absolutely no sense to us. We respond in our old broken nature, just like Sarah did. When I'm too old, then I'm going to have a son. It doesn't work that way. The biology doesn't work that way. The body is worn out and shut down. Well, our Lord did this a little bit later too. He made a promise to a young virgin that she would have a son, but she wouldn't have have an earthly father. She wouldn't have any earthly relationship. She would have a son because the very pre-incarnate Son of God who is right here would be spoken into her ear by the Holy Spirit. And Mary would conceive and give birth to Jesus. This, this promise from Abraham and Sarah had to come first because it was through their family line that God would provide for the family that would trace their ancestry back through David, back through David's ancestors to Abraham so that God would keep his promise to send a Savior to us. God loves to do what we don't expect. God loves to do what we would say is impossible. God loves to save us despite our unbelief. Thanks be to God that when we do call on him, when he gives us faith to believe, we call on him and he keeps his promises to us. Even hopes and promises that we think are sometimes long past where we are. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our catechetical review for today, the sixth commandment. 
You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not, so, excuse me, we should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do. And husband and wife love and honor each other. And now in the season of Lent, we continue to pray together the litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath, and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord, to comfort the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, saints, I pray that you have a blessed March 1st. Join us again tomorrow morning. We'll continue diving deeply into God's Word to see His gracious promises for us. Go in His peace.